Hi there, thanks for tuning in. The iron ore miner Fortescue Metals Group has reported its first half results. And by and large, uh, these figures were in line with the market's expectations. There weren't any nasty surprises. Uh, the share price did bump around a little bit, and we'll get to that in a moment. But in terms of the financial performance, uh, by and large, these figures were uh, within sight of what the market was expecting. I'm using the average of analyst expectations on Bloomberg when it comes to the consensus figures. So uh, revenue at $7.83 billion. That was uh, just uh, in line with the market's expectations. The underlying EBITDA at $4.35 billion. That was just a shade below uh, the $4.4 billion. That was the average of analyst expectations. Uh, and then NPAT uh, coming in at $2.36 billion. So that was uh, just below the $2.4 billion figure that the market was looking at. So in terms of what they did well, uh, they are quite effective for the SKU when it comes to the operational side of things. So that was reflected in the performance over the course of the last six months. Uh, there were record shipments over the course of the period, uh, just narrowly edging out a record that was set in the uh, same time last year uh, by about 4 million tonnes. Uh, that figure coming in uh, just short of 97 million tonnes, 96.9 to be exact. There was also a record amount of throughput over the course of the period of uh, 98 million tonnes. So uh, the cost side of things, however, uh, was a little more unwieldy. Uh, their C1 costs over the course of the first six months were up by uh, 14%. So that was up from $15.28 per tonne uh, to $17.00. 43 the usual culprits are uh, reflected here in terms of labor costs material uh, the cost of energy um, but then um, at the same time they had to contend with uh, falling iron ore prices so uh, over the course of the period we saw the average realized price uh, for Fortescue down by almost nine and a half percent so that figure fell from 96 dollars per ton uh, to 87 dollars per ton so they give you a sense of the mechanics of those numbers um, in terms of uh, a blemish if you like uh, you could describe uh, an area of consternation with uh, Fortescue being the outlook uh, with what's going on in relation to their payout ratio so what we have seen having peaked over the course of the last couple of years there has been a, a bit of a uh, there's been a continued decline in their payout ratio over the course of uh, the recent halves and that was a, a continuation as far as this period was concerned so uh, the payout ratio fell from 70 percent in the previous half uh, to 65 percent this half uh, having peaked at around 80 percent of uh, net pat uh, a couple of years ago and this is the area that analysts are paying a lot of uh, attention to when it comes to Fortescue um, because when essentially you are seeing uh, something of a deviation in direction in, in relation to Fortescue Future Industries, the greening of the business, uh, that is a draw on capital and a draw on resources and um, shareholders are always on alert when it comes to this. Interim dividend of 75 cents per share uh, was a, a little bit on the low side compared to some expectations and that may have been uh, a reflection of why the shares sold off uh, to the tune of around 3% in the immediate aftermath of the market opening having uh, looked at the results. It was able to recover over the course of the rest of the day uh, having seen a small positive at, at one stage it was just in negative territory at the time of recording. So significantly when it comes to uh, guidance this hasn't changed in relation to uh, what has been uh, a feature of recent updates. Uh, shipments for the year are going to be between 187 to 192 million tonnes. Uh, costs are going to still be a factor and they have highlighted that in the uh, conference call after the result. Uh, they expect uh, uh, C1 costs to be in the order of 18 to 18.75 per tonne. CapEx, uh, excluding uh, Fortescue Future Industries, in the order of 2.7 to 3.1 billion dollars. Uh, Fortescue Future Industries anticipated CapEx is going to be around five to 600 million dollars of uh, operating costs, and then there'll be around 230 million dollars worth of capital investment. So if there's another blemish, it's probably the fact that there's not as much clarity in relation to the uh, pipeline for uh, for the skew future industries as far as the market is concerned but uh, to some extent 
the market would never be satisfied when it comes to that anyway because it is such a broad picture uh, at present. So it really comes down to the discipline that Fortescue has in relation to keeping people in the frame when it comes to this important direction for the organization and for investors to be able to uh, understand what that means in terms of a draw on uh, the resources of, of the parent, if you like, uh, under these circumstances. So by and large, an uncontroversial result. Uh, it's quite telling that the market was able to recover to the extent that it did over the course of the day. But the other thing to bear in mind is that since the beginning uh, of November, we have seen uh, Fortescue Metals shares really reflect uh, the turnaround story as far as China is concerned. Uh, the shares have risen by as much as 55% uh, from the beginning of November to the middle of January. And now it becomes a question uh, as much as anything in the near term about what is happening in China and how analysts extrapolate that in relation to the iron ore price. Because whilst there's been a, a, a big there was a big run up in the price of iron ore, that wasn't necessarily reflected in uh, Chinese steel mill margins uh, amongst other measures. So that's what the market's probably looking for. And that's probably arguably one of the more important, uh, obvious near term catalysts as far as Fortescue is concerned. Thanks for tuning in.